Welcome, race fans, to the 2019 Chevrolet Belle Owl Grand Prix here in Detroit, Michigan, the Motor City, USA. Hi, my name is Doug Damon, and in conjunction with your local cable uh, broadcasting network, uh, we're going to take you a little behind the scenes uh, to this very important race right here in the city of Detroit, uh, not only for the Indy circuit, but uh, for the community as a whole. Uh, we'd like to thank a lot of the uh, Indy car drivers that came in for the race for kids. Uh, they were uh, great going around to local hospitals, helping out some of these youngsters who are a lot less fortunate than us, raising $7 million over the last 30 years. So thanks to those drivers out there for racing for kids. And for a lot of the new people just getting familiar with the Indy car racing uh, or F1, uh, there is uh, some similar differences to these uh, automobiles. Uh, a lot of that testing will be going on here during these next few days here in the duel in Detroit. Uh, well, the primary factors uh, with these automobiles are uh, the Indy cars run on gasoline, high octane. Uh, the F1s run on alcohol. Uh, the aero designs are quite different because of the downforce generated by these uh, speeds at 235 miles per hour. At 81 miles per hour, uh, the weight is magnified three times in an Indy car, equaling the weight of the vehicle itself at 1,500 pounds. Uh, so we are seeing a lot of innovations here in Detroit as far as the uh, aero designs, but all still on the Dallara chassis. Uh, now as we move forward in, into the uh, racing season, uh, the Indy 500 has been completed, uh, and uh, a lot of these safety features uh, that are developed right here uh, in Detroit go right into your own automobile, uh, especially with the uh, rear view mirrors, uh, seat belts, uh, braking systems, uh, steering wheel components, uh, all that's going to go right in your own automobile, keeping you a uh, lot, lot safer as well on the road. So ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to sit back, relax, as we take you through the different pit areas, uh, get to meet some of the people, put these cars on the track. So stay with us here at the 2019 Chevrolet Belle Isle Grand Prix. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at the Detroit Grand Prix for 2019. Uh, we're here back here in the pit area where all the action is. And your name is? Steve. Thanks, Steve. Uh, you're with uh, Team Honda, is it? Correct. That was right all Letterman Lanigan. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, great engine, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I guess there's a lot of difference going on with these Indy cars and F1s and about downdraft and things. And what's changed with that? Ooh. Well, I mean, they're trying to keep it to where the cars are similar, which they did. They did that two years ago and changed the body so everything's the same. Now it's it's kind of up to the motor to do all the work. Wow. So that's what they're counting on. Is our motor doing the work? Sure, sure. And uh, so you only have so much time to get things prepared before you're back out in the track. You're always going over everything. I imagine it's quite a feat. Correct. Yeah, it constantly make sure everything's set up the way they want it. I mean, just just got to keep going back and forth, make sure everything's the way they want it. It's time consuming, but you got to do it. Exactly. And of course, a lot of technology goes into our own cars, doesn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So That's probably a big part of what you guys do is try to determine what really uh, uh, works under these performance standards. Yes, exactly. So. Well, good. We're so glad Team Honda's out there doing appreciate a great it. job. Thank you. I appreciate so, you showing up. Yes, sir. Stay with us, folks. Inspections are done to keep team competition balanced and exciting. IndyCar series officials will conduct five inspections. Driver safety equipment, pre and post qualifying, pre and post race. The inspection process includes four stations, which focus on different components of the car. During the process, inspectors will check, among other things, the mandated safety features, chassis underwing, fuel cell, height, width, and weight. Initial inspections include 15 officials, known as inspectors, and is overseen by the IndyCar Series Technical Director. In the safety station, inspectors ensure that the cars meet all safety requirements. Among the items checked are SWIMS, which is the suspension wheel wing energy management system. In addition, inspectors also check restraints, driver's seat and headrests, seat belts, fasteners, pedal position, steering wheel, helmet, earpieces, fire bottle, and frontal head restraint. At the gauge and template stations, inspectors utilize about 60 jigs and templates to measure each car to ensure it meets the size and shape requirements. All drivers must wear fire-resistant one-piece uniform 
fire resistant socks, shoes, gloves, and head sock. They are also required to wear Nomex underwear, long sleeve tops, and full length bottoms. Welcome back, race fans, to the 2019 Chevrolet Bel Air uh, Grand Prix here in Detroit, Michigan, USA. Uh, we've got Karen Adams with us here, and one of the most important parts of the pit crew process is tires from Firestone. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Doug, for having me. Indeed, and uh, of course, uh, a lot of our viewers uh, use tires too, and uh, especially here in these kind of conditions, uh, it's a real challenge, isn't it? Yeah, the streets of Abel Isle are just like a lot of the streets that you and I would drive in on our passenger cars. So it's really important tire maintenance and taking proper tear, good care of your tires here in any car, as well as on your own car. And you, you come here to the Detroit course uh, all prepared. It looks like you have a whole army of people here, uh, technicians, and monitoring many different conditions, obviously. Uh, like you said, these streets, they can be bumpy, a lot of imperfections, hazards. Yeah, this is my 11th year here at the Detroit Grand Prix, and we have engineers and technicians and service people that come to every race. We set up, we make sure we get the wheels for the teams, and we put the tires on the wheels. Some of the mounting equipment you see in the background here puts the tires and wheels together, we balance them, and then we get them back out to the race teams. Of course, what's critical is safety for the driver, uh, as well as with our, our uh, uh, people on the uh, viewing audience. Uh, so Firestone takes particular attention to this, don't they? Yes, we do. Safety is number one for us, just like it should be for you driving your own car. One of the very important things that we look at here is inflation pressure. So checking the tire inflation pressure here is very important. We check it every, every time the car comes in. We're checking that inflation pressure, making sure it's in the right range. Now on your cars, you can probably fly, find the right inflation pressure either on the fuel door or inside the door. There's a lot of places that you can find it, other, also your owner's manual. But you should check your tire pressure every couple weeks or so. And unlike maybe our tires, do you use compressed air or what do you use in these tires? We use, not, we use dry air and a lot of the teams purge dry air and put nitrogen. Of course, air is mostly nitrogen but they find that's very consistent no need to use nitrogen on your own cars nitrogen is what's mostly in there anyway we don't go that fast on 994 I hope you don't <laughs> well great and ultimately in conclusion uh, what you find out here at the track saves lives out there doesn't it there's a lot of what we learn here at the racetrack that we put into our Bridgestone and Firestone passenger tires so it's something that we're always looking at improving safety improving reliability and durability sure if Harvey Firestone was still around, he'd be very proud of you, Karen. Yeah, I think he would be proud of the team. Thank you. You're welcome. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen, here at the Detroit Grand Prix. Racing tire manufacturers stamp every tire with barcodes and track their use and location. That's why they don't sell their tires to the race teams. They lease them. When tires disintegrate on the track, tire engineers will pick up all the pieces for failure analysis and intellectual property protection. Nothing is left to chance. Most tires reach the checkered flag intact, but are destroyed later. Firestone Firehawk race tires are specifically engineered for the type of course that they'll be used on. Oval tracks use just one type of tire, while road and street tracks use all three types of tires, primary, alternate, and rain. The black sidewall primary Firestone race tires are a competitive balance between speed, cornering, and durability. Firehawk primary tires are used on all three types of tracks. Visually differentiated by red sidewalls, Firestone alternate tires have a softer compound than primary tires, allowing for faster speeds and better cornering, but quicker wear. Alternate tires are used on road and street tracks only. The gray sidewall Firestone race tires are developed for wet conditions and use a grooved tread pattern that improves grip, controls and helps prevent hydroplaning, Race tires are used on roads and street courses only, as the IndyCar series will not run oval races if conditions are wet. In total, Firestone supplied more than 2,000 tires for the Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix. Delara, the exclusive chassis supplier for the NTT IndyCar series, was founded by its current president, Giampaolo Delara, in 1972. After working for Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, and Di Tomasio, Dallara wanted to continue pursuing his dream of working in the world-class race cars. He established Dallara Automobili da Compenzoni in his hometown of Vinaro di Malagari, Parma, in the Italian Motor Valley. 
Since its establishment, Dallara has become the world renowned for its specialty in design, manufacturing, and developing race cars. The company's success can be credited to its achievements in Formula 3, first in Italy and then around the world. Its American acclaim can be traced to its involvement since 1997 with the NTT IndyCar series, its consultancy for major manufacturers, and its continued focus on technology and innovation. Entering the 2019 season, Dallara Cars won more than 300 races in the NTT IndyCar Series competition. Dallara prides itself in searching for the highest standards of quality, performance, safety, and customer support. Dallara's core competencies include design using carbon fiber composite materials, aerodynamics by means of wind tunnel and computational fluid dynamics, vehicle dynamics through simulations and testing, and the fast and flexible production of high quality prototypes. In recent years, the engineering activities have expanded both for race cars and high performance road cars. Dallara provides consulting services to some of the world's most important car companies, including Alfa Romeo, Audi, Bugatti, Ferrari, KTM, Lamborghini, and Maserati, and many others that cannot be mentioned due to confidentiality agreements. Dallara cemented its commitment to IndyCar in 2012 when it opened its American headquarters and engineering center in Speedway, Indiana, a short distance from the legendary Indianapolis Motor Speedway, home of the Indianapolis 500. The Dallara IndyCar factory is a multifunctional center for research and development where the current NTT IndyCar Series IR12 chassis and IR18 aero kits and the Indy Lights IL15 chassis are produced and assembled. The Dallara IndyCar factory houses an entertainment center where visitors can learn about the history of Dallara and its cars and discover the secrets of design and manufacturing of a modern IndyCar. And ladies and gentlemen, we're back here at the Belle Isle Grand Prix. And uh, one of the fascinating facts about Belle Isle, it's not only home to the Detroit Grand Prix, but uh, to hydroplane racing uh, right off the shores here at Belle Isle. We got Tim Challoway, pit crew chief of this amazing looking uh, boat behind us. Hi, Tim. Hi, how you doing, Doug? Well, thanks, uh, Tim, for taking the time. I know you've had a lot of visitors over here, and people are asking questions. Wow, Chevy in the D, uh, you know, hydroplane racing is going to be coming. Tell us a little, when's that start? Okay, the uh, Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers Detroit Hydrofest will be August 24th and 25th, and we run, of course, in the between the mainland and Belle Isle on the Scott Middle Ground. We use the... We use the Rooster Tail Dining Facility and the Belle Isle Bridge as our as the east and west determinants. And this year, we're we're happy to say uh, we're going to have Grand Prix boat racing. They use the Chevy Big Block 468s. Ooh. We're going to have the 350 class hydroplanes, which uses the Chevy 350 Big Block. Uh, we're going to have Jersey Skiffs, which is the flat bottom boats with a with two people in it. Yes. And then we'll also have some Vintage Unlimiteds come in, and they'll run the big course. The uh, small, the smaller class boats will run the small 2.3, uh, 1. 1 and 2 thirds mile course, which runs between the yacht club and the the mainland. How fast do these boats go out in that water? Well, unlike the big Unlimited, who can go about 200 miles an hour, which wow. we don't have this year, the uh, Grand Prix boats can get up to about 160 down the straights, and the 350s can get up to about 140 down the straights. So. Well, I can water ski, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's good. They are very exciting, and I think people like the noise. They really, they really kick. They out. they really kick up some noise, and they have some great competition, and it's very exciting. So, uh, folks, get on DetroitBoatRaces.com. You'll get all the information, including ticket prices, and uh, where to park, and what's going on. And if you want to volunteer, that's also a great play wow. website. You can volunteer at DetroitBoatRaces.com. And uh, 
it's $25 to volunteer and you get a you get parties and uh, a nice time and you know, a man. nice time and uh, you can get a nice hat and some t-shirts Pull these boss polos you got to pay for it well but, I'm in Tim so I want you to sign me up okay all right and uh, I want to thank the Chevy dealers uh, of Detroit too for uh, putting the effort in they uh, are fantastic volunteer sponsors and uh, God love them the that they're keeping boat racing here in Detroit for a long, long time. Well, that's why I drive a Chevy, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. This, folks. Folks, we're back here at the pit crew area of the Detroit Grand Prix. Conlon Racing yeah, uh, is just about ready to take off in their Indy car. Uh, we've had a chance to get inside the pit crew tent uh, and uh, it takes a lot of teamwork in F, uh, to get these cars back out the track. So uh, we're just a few minutes away from beginning uh, this, this uh, Indy car race here in Detroit. And uh, we're going to try to get you uh, through some, some of the other pit crew areas. Uh, this is where the real action is because at a race like this, anything can happen. So stay with us here at the Detroit Grand Prix. Few sports have the same logistical issues as motorsports do, and for IndyCar and Formula One in particular, with circuits spread at the far corners of the globe, logistics is an enormous challenge. The first challenge involves transportation of team members. Normally about 100 people travel from the team's headquarters to the Grand Prix. The team must also rent cars, buses, or vans, or if the race is in a highly congested area, charter helicopters. And the track itself, the team operates from a large mobile facility. A catering staff prepares meals for the team and a kitchen that could rival many restaurant kitchens. Most teams transport three cars, one spare chassis, and a spare engine to each race. Technical partners and local contractors ship tires, fuel, and other equipment not manufactured by the team. All teams are headquartered in Europe so that the European races may pack their equipment into articulated trucks and drive it to their destination. For the races in Asia, Australia, and the Americas, the teams fly out their equipment on transport planes. Most races are on Sundays and everything must be ready and set to go by Friday morning. When practice and qualifying sessions begin, drivers can practice as much or as little as they want during the sessions, but their goal is to sort out how to set up the car to achieve maximum speed on that particular track in specific weather conditions. The driver working closely with the race engineer will choose suspension and aerodynamic settings, pick tires, and determine optimal fueling. The race engineer and the driver will continue to communicate and tweak their strategy during the race. The steering wheel for Indy cars are very complicated and expensive, costing in a range from $25,000 to $40,000. A typical IndyCar steering wheel has 13 main features, from a drink switch to a fuel map switch. Here's a brief explanation of what they do. Anti-roll bars adjuster allows the driver to fine-tune the handling of the car by engaging mechanical linkages connected to the front or rear suspensions. Dash displays warning lights and information the driver needs during the race. That information includes lap times, oil, water, and gearbox temperatures, and fuel mileage. RPM shift lights, LED lights that go from green to yellow to red and indicates engine RPM. When the red lights are on, the driver shifts gears. Pit lane speed limiter, used entering the pit lane by the driver to activate the engine control program, limiting the car's speed to the pit lane speed limit which is usually 60 mile an hour. Push to talk activates the microphone in the driver's helmet so he or she can communicate over the radio. Reset. During the pit stop, the driver pushes the button to reset his fuel reading on the display. Fuel map switch allows the driver to adjust the fuel mapping of the engine to increase fuel mileage or to increase power. Dash scroll allows the driver to scroll between the screens of information. There are different pages available on the dash, including race page, qualifying page, and practice page. Weight jacker. 
adjust the cross weight of the car from left to right or right to left, depending on the button pushed. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2019 Chevrolet Detroit Belle Isle Grand Prix. Um, I'm here in one of the most important areas uh, of the pit crew process. I'm with Tim Buffman, who's with the Indy Safety Car Team. Uh, because in races like this, anything can happen, right, Tim? Yeah, uh, the AMR IndyCar Safety Team uh, travels to all 18 events uh, throughout the year. Uh, we have the same firefighters, paramedics, doctors, and nurses that work on the drivers at each event. What that does is it creates a situation where we're familiar with the cars, we're familiar with those drivers. We put a process together that uh, gives us an opportunity to save lives if a driver has a, a large impact out on the racetrack. And other things that the track safety team does, we have 30 individuals on our roster. Uh, each event we take 16 of those paramedic firefighters, doctors and nurses to every race. We have four vehicles here. We have the obviously the Chevy Silverados that are, are decked out with all the equipment we need, including fire equipment, rescue equipment. Um, he uh, has online equipment, so radio communication, so we have computer hookup and, and so we can see what's going on, timing and scoring. We have live video feeds in so we can look at the crashes and see what the other trucks are doing. So the, the safety team starts traveling and working and training in January. Uh, we, we have a com comprehensive training program, we, we do that. Uh, we work primarily on speeding things up and the efficiency. So obviously saving a life is something that has to be done in a very timely fashion and our our job we're out on the street if you had a 911 accident a vehicle accident and you called 911 it would take about four to six minutes for a fire truck average national average to get to you we are normally on the scene within 15 seconds by the time we get our driver out of the car and to the hospital it's two minutes so everything happens very very fast uh, and our team drills to make that happen. You know, with the priority is time is, is saving lives. And so on top of the, the paramedics and firefighters, the nurses and doctors work with the local trauma centers, local burn centers, and make sure if one of our drivers have to go in there that they understand just how fast things have to happen to save these drivers' lives. Well, seconds uh, save lives, basically, uh, Tim, and it's almost like mili military precision is what you do. Yes, it is, and, and we're very proud of what we do, and, and we're one of the few traveling teams now other uh, forms of racing are developing that safety teams, including Formula One's working on one for next year. IMSA, who's at this event, has a traveling team. Not as many people, but they're all building up to this level because they know that it's the most effective way of providing life safety measures when necessary. Well, Tim, thanks. Keep it up, especially at these speeds. Anything can happen, folks. So stay tuned here at the Detroit Grand Prix. There were lots of family-friendly activities for all the racing car fanatics during the three days of the Chevrolet Detroit Belle Isle Grand Prix. What's the baby's name? Henry. Opening day, Friday, May 31st, was free of charge, courtesy of Comerica Bank. Guests have access to seating and all the grandstands. Attendees could cheer on their favorite drivers with the little ones during the seven races that took place on the 2.35-mile racetrack throughout the weekend. These race features some of the top of the line cars from the NTT IndyCar Series and Trans Am Series and more. In the Meyer Family Fun Zone, race visitors can do all sorts of fun things like bubble soccer, fouling, and jumble Jenna. For some people, the Detroit Grand Prix is less about the races and more about spending quality time with their family and friends, plus chances to meet some local athletes. Attendees could catch a break from the action in the Bud Light Food Court and Beer Garden, which featured the taste of Detroit and local food trucks. Then there is Knocker Ball, a game where kids wrap up an inflatable soccer ball and hit each other. This is a fun time for kids running across the field area and bumping into each other. And in between the races, folks could check out the art fair and live entertainment by Frankie Ballard, Stone Temple Pilots, and many more. As we said uh, here at the Detroit Grand Prix, uh, anything can happen and definitely people are having fun here. Uh, your name is? Mike. 
Gardner. Mike, and you are? Kayla Abenhill. Well, yeah, Kayla, nice. I saw your hand toss with the bank. <laughs> You guys are having some fun today, right? Yeah, yes, awesome. we are. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Awesome time. Yeah. And your husband and wife. Boyfriend and girlfriend. Soon to be. Soon to be. Yes, exactly. 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 Well, good. Uh, and uh, that's always a good feeling, you know. You see everybody coming down to Belle Isle. Uh, it's been fun, isn't it? Yeah. It's, this is this is my fifth year in a row coming. Wow. Yeah. yeah. This is this is my first year coming, so I'm okay. having a blast. Where are you good folks from? I'm I'm Canada. Oh, Canada. Yeah, right. Canada. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm from the Flint area. Oh, good. good. Yeah. Good. You know, as you know, uh, it's all racing's part of it, but having a good old time yeah. uh, is definitely what's about. And the Motor City's doing that, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It really is. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. You folks uh, continue with having your fun, and uh, you stay with us here at the Grand Prix here in Detroit. at a race anything can happen right and uh, what happens is people have fun and we've got a future race car driver here his name's Devlin isn't it yes now where are you from Devlin I'm from Novi Novi and you're you're here with your nice aunt right yeah and your name is my name is Jenny thanks Jenny uh, for you guys coming out looks like you're having some fun here we are well, great now what do you like about all this racing stuff Devlin that you can get stuff oh really and have you sat in one of these race cars yet? No. Do you want to? Yes. He does. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Devlin's going to be the future Grand Prix race car driver. It is a nice amp brought him down here. So I'm sure we're going to be seeing you again, aren't we? Yes. Well, folks, stay tuned with us here at the Detroit Grand Prix. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the 2019 Chevrolet Belle Isle Detroit Grand Prix right here in the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, USA, otherwise known as the Duel in Detroit. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you know, in these races, anything can happen. Uh, it's been a tough race for a lot of these drivers due to the fact that this course is so bumpy. So it's on that turn 7 and 11 is where we saw a lot of the passing. Uh, but as we conclude the program, we want to thank everybody out there, especially our volunteers who helped put this together, uh, starting with Roger Penske and everybody, uh, to the people who uh, help out here throughout the track, uh, getting us around, and all the safety aspects. This is a Department of Natural Resources designated state park. So feel free to bring the family anytime uh, to this very beautiful island founded in the 1700s by Cadillac. Well, I'd like to say thanks, everybody. Doug Damon's my name. On behalf of all the volunteers and all of us at the local Wine Dot Community Cable and uh, Ann Arbor CTN, safe driving, ladies and gentlemen, and see you next year.